choices to choose between A and B and X and Y. Do you like burritos or tacos? Do we nuke France or your mom? Dilemma. Hmm. Tension. Brain food. Food for thought. Food. Why do we like choices? Why are they cool? Choices give you agency and allow you to make a story unique to yourself. People can theorize the outcomes of one, two, or a thousand choices. What sets games apart from books are choices. A game is interesting, it is stimulating, it is exciting. Why? Choices! Choices in games can be small and minute. Do you use the bow or the sword to kill the enemy? Or they can be large. What we are most interested in for this video are choices concerning story. This video doesn't really have a lot of direction, and it's my first time making a video in this style, so expect mostly rambling. Haha! <laughs> now. Choices make a story game what it is. Without choices, it would just be a book with images and sound. Me. So that means that our game, Fight For Me, which is a story game, must have some amazing choices. Fight For Me is what I've been working on for nearly a year now. An indie story adventure game all about the nature of warfare, cute murderous mobs called me, which you must lead to victory, blah de blah de blah, yada yada. A good choice wants to fulfill certain goals. Our choices should allow the player to A. Decide the destiny of your people. The player should feel like they are changing the fate, ideas and direction of the me. B. Affect relations with your comrades. There are four characters in Fight For Me, and I want to allow players to choose favorites, and for the behavior of characters to change around your choices. C. Move towards endings. The game sets up different routes you can fall into. Four. The D. Give players control over their game. Agency. Players must be able to guide the alliance in the way they would want to. They should be able to view the player me as an extension of themselves. E. Unexpected crisis. Some choices are best if they eventually lead to events you shouldn't have predicted. Did you jokingly tell me that the Jordans are fake? Congratulations! You have ruined the entire shoe wear industry. These five choices can be further divided into categories. Good. Our goals have been set. Now we need to implement them. To implement good player choices, we need to look at these factors. I call this WHOOM! <laughs> stands for when are the choices presented? Before after other scenes. Be sure to keep the choices in your story open that you might later change their order. Huh? Stands for how can players make a good choice? Say, you come across two doors. One kills you instantly and the other does not. That's not very fun. You have nothing to base your choice off of other than pretty colors in this case. It also doesn't have fun consequences. If a choice kills you, you simply reload the game and take the different choice. Ugh! Stands for what do the choices change? How do they affect the story, the gameplay, how everything continues? The last Ugh! is for how do players see its effects? Subtle consequences or an immediate larger effect? My personal favorite is the uninformed decision with long-term consequences. At the beginning of Fight For Me, you literally wake up, see all your friends are dead, and then must decide what you will fight for. You have almost nothing to base your choice off of, but your choice will have great effect in the future. This fits the philosophical themes of the game. It is interesting, mysterious. It makes the player wonder what will happen based on their uninformed decision. The other type of choice in this category is the informed decision. The informed decision usually involves circumstances that allow you to make a better type of decision, of which you would know the cause and effect. They give you the arguments, they give you the standpoints. You know that one of them will hate you and the other will like you. What do you choose? Good, now we know how to implement choices. What the choices change comes in many forms in Fight For Me. 
Almost all of your choices affect points. Affection points that decide whether a character loves or hates you. Ideology points that decide how your people react to your choices. Some events in the game even calculate their own points based on all your actions in the entire playthrough, affecting your ending. Points, points, points. The ending of a game is a climactic moment and perhaps the most important part of showing the consequences of your choices. It is very important for all these choices to come together into something that the player feels like they deserve or is a proper consequence of their choices. It should make them happy, interested, or crying in tears and tragedy of all the sheer emotions you put into that gosh darn well-crafted ending. Many games deal in good and bad endings. Personally, I don't believe in that entirely. I like different endings, with good and bad points. Consequences that make people think hmm. and realize that there was never a good or bad option in their choices to begin with. Let us put this into perspective. Imagine a game where you have to befriend the king of the villagers while not angering the queen of the villagers. Imagine playing it for 10 hours only to realize that the choices you made 10 hours ago give you a bad ending. You are killed. That's no fun. I think it's a lot more fun to give you different endings that reward players for making cool choices instead of punishing them for making wrong ones. Imagine the same game. But based on your choices, either the king or the queen will have to die. Oh no, dilemma, tragedy, action. Players will have to make choices to save their favorite character, but both endings will have consequences and none will feel better than any other ending. An interesting thing about choices in games is that feeling like making choices is what gives people the best feeling of agency. This is why so many games allow players to say things that don't matter at all. Even if obvious, it adds to player agency and even to immersion of the game. While working on Fight For Me, I realized that my choices had become this insanely cool web of connections with a thousand possibilities. Except none of it matters if the player doesn't even notice that there are other web threats. That there is nothing else. That even if I have a very cool fourth wall break, it does not matter if the player never sees it at all. <laughs> this is why I later decided to add another new feature to the game. One very popular in story games. The approval boxes. These small icons show which characters approve and disapprove of your actions. These are some of the pros and cons. Players have more oversight over their decisions. They feel like they have more agency. They are able to gauge how their choices affect their companions, which is one of the three main components that the choices in my game should affect. One thing I like a bit less about these bubbles is that they make the game feel a bit less mysterious. They can also break immersion a bit. Figuring out what a character would think about your choices is also an interesting part of the game. We shall see how this mechanic evolves in Fight For Me, among many other things. Now we have a way for us to implement and use choices well in games. If you are ever inclined to pursue a creative project, to create your own story with choices, I hope you are inspired. I hope you realize the power of choices you now hold in your hands. This was the video. Be sure to join our Discord. I will continue working on Fight For Me until my very last breath. More videos like this may follow if this is successful. Thank you for listening. And oh my god, they are here. I am gone.